your brother Larry Adinekon welcoming you to the really really knowing God channel as I lead this fellowship of information and inspiration in the knowledge of God all powered by the pastor Larry Adinekon Center for Inspiration. <laughs> This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone upon the crown of Jesus. We are sharing truth this morning on prayer for your enemy. Is it practical? Coming from Luke 23, 32, through 34, 32 to 43. Thank you. Shall we pray together? Father God, we bless you, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask, O oh God, as we go on into this, Lord God, usher us along. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 32. So there were also two others, criminals, led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and the other one on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided the garments and cast lots, and the people stood looking on. But even the rulers with them with them sneered, saying, He saved others, let him save himself. If he is Christ, the chosen of God. The soldiers also mocked him, coming and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And an inscription was also written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals who was uh, who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, You not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation. We and we justly, for we receive the reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to him, Lord, uh, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say unto you today, you will be with me in paradise. Praise God. All right, so <clears throat> two other criminals were with him, all, of, all three of them carrying crosses. But you know something? Have you noticed they didn't care whether those ones collapsed under the cross or not? They didn't care, they didn't bother whether those ones collapsed under the cross. Nobody had them to carry their crosses. They carried their own right up to the way. Oh, maybe somebody says they were not perhaps not as weak as Jesus was, okay? But they didn't care whether they were weak or not. Nobody looked at them. They went all the way, you know, and carried their own cross. It was Jesus, their focus was upon Jesus. This guy, he will not die before he got to, 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 to Golgotha. He must be killed upon the cross. He must hang upon a tree. He must be cost you know and all that just like we were saying the other time you know there are times when you the enemy just plays into your hands on yes you know um yeah we use that language in games and all that I just played into my hands and all that yeah so the enemy satan thought he had cornered you know cornered jesus he had you know the but the bible says if he had known that that was what was going to be his end he would not have tried it at all yes and to god be the glory for for his manifold wisdom all of these things have been sorted even before the foundation of the world, that was a revelation to John um, in the Acts of the, so in the Book of the Revelation. A lamb was being sacrificed, you know, taking away the sin of the world. And Satan observed; he saw the whole thing. He thought they were doing drama. He didn't know that that was that is what was his undoing. Yeah. So he, he thought that he had cornered him, but he played into the hands of 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 God. Praise God. All right. Then so let's move on, and then they crucified them eventually, and then. Um, Jesus prayed, prayed for his enemies. Father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. And, you know, he has taught us to pray for our enemies. He said so before he ever went to the cross. And now he had an opportunity and he put it to practice. What he had been saying before. He says, pray for them that despitefully use you. Bless and curse not. You know, uh, you know he said many, up to two, three places in the, in, in the Gospels where Jesus was saying we should pray for our enemies. Now a chance came, he put it to practice himself. And then some people will say, ah, that thing is not practical these days. Or it's not practical. It is indeed practicable. You can do it. It all depends on whether you believe uh, in that scripture or not. Because you see, not only just Jesus did it. Also, Stephen, as Stephen were being stoned to death, he said, Lord, don't lay this sin to their charge. He, he practices it as well. So it's really, really practical. Practicable. It just depends upon your heart. When that God has given you understanding, when you can understand some things better than the average human beings, when you know that, oh, no, these people, they are just instruments in the hand of some other, they are just puppets in the hands of some other person, you can feel for them and pray accordingly. But when you, when you don't see things the way God perceives them, it will be a bit more difficult for you. Because you see, um, how do I put it? You are not seeing things from a vantage position, you know, 
<clears throat> you are not seeing from a position of advantage. You are seeing it from under, and so you are not seeing it properly. That is what makes it difficult. That's what makes us operate in the flesh. When you operate in the flesh, it's difficult for you to pray for your enemies. But when you operate in the Spirit, and the Spirit of God makes you have um, um, some understanding that is not regular, that is not the kind of understanding that human beings have beyond human understanding, you will easily pray for your enemies, honestly. And I pray that somebody will understand what I'm saying today and pray, Father, give me this kind of heart, give, give me this kind of spirit, you know, and all that. You can see that David, in many occasions, David also exhibited something similar, many, many occasions, okay? I thought some other times it didn't look like that for David, especially when you read through the Psalms. Nevertheless, you see on a number of occasions, David did that. Now, that was somebody in the old covenant who was able to behave like jesus would want us to be at least sometimes now we are now in the new covenant everything is available to us from jesus that was not available to david available to us to make us live this kind of life may god help in Jesus' holy name really really is possible the bible says they divided his garments they cast lots for some other ones and then they stood looking on the rulers uh the other soldiers as well as one of the criminals, they all said the same thing. You saved others. Save yourself now if you are Christ the chosen of God. Okay? You know, they said all that. And um, that comes from a place where they don't even understand what is going on. Their perception of the Christ is somebody that will just appear from somewhere. Nobody will know his parents. He will appear from somewhere. He will have so much power. Um, uh, nobody will be able to do anything about him. He could do and undo. And that's why they were talking this way. You know, at times, that's at times when people have a completely wrong impression of something. And they will be basing their expectation on that wrong impression that they had. If you are the Christ, save yourself and others. Whereas the Christ was supposed to die for them. But they didn't have that understanding. They, 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 they had a completely different understanding. And you know it happens a lot. People's, your, your perception and your understanding of something is completely wrong. Once that is wrong, everything, what you expect from that direction is going to be wrong. It's going to be wrong. <clears throat> Make sure I should give an example. In a couple of uh, years ago, you know, somebody was... Uh, uh, you know, we had a big brother in, in government, okay? And somebody was expecting that this big brother would be taking money from government and be giving the churches. And so the, the person met me and said, but why is our brother not giving us money? Why is he not giving us money? I understand that it's a vote for it. Really? A vote for government money to be given to churches? Where do you get that from? Oh, but that was the impression he had. That was it. People have some really wrong impressions at times and their expectation will be built on that wrong impression the christ was supposed to die but these people they had the opposite impression and that's why they were saying these things that they are saying it's always good for you to find information to make sure that you know the, the thing the proper thing and not just create an impression of your own and begin to expect based upon your impression which is in itself is wrong you know <laughs> victory is ours in jesus holy name okay then so let's move on and then one of the criminals said that, look, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other one rebuked him, saying, don't you even fear God? Seeing that you are under the same um, uh, condemnation, uh, we unjustly will receive the reward of our, of our deeds, you know, and this and that. Now, can you see this criminal? This criminal, <laughs> this criminal loves God. He actually loves God. He told the other one, don't you fear God? In other words, he feared God. Criminal. Let's go on. This criminal says we are suffering justly because this is the reward of what we did. This man has done nothing wrong. So this criminal, listen to this, listen, let me talk about this criminal. This criminal loved God. This criminal knew Jesus. He probably did the equivalent of following Jesus on social media. This criminal knew that this man has done nothing wrong. This criminal knew that Jesus had the kingdom. And this criminal had interest in that kingdom. Criminal. So, so much so that he said to Jesus, when you enter your kingdom, please remember me. When you come into your kingdom, remember me. In other words, this man has been following Jesus on social media. He knew that this man is a holy man of God. He knew that this man has done nothing wrong. He knew that this man was being crucified unjustly. He knew that this man had a kingdom and he wanted to be a part of the kingdom. And that brings me to something. You know, there are times when some criminals love God. They are interested in the things of God. A friend of mine got kidnapped, and when they found out that he's a pastor, this criminal began to confess to him that, actually, I belong to so-and-so church too. 
you know and then I'm, I'm so sorry we didn't know that you're a pastor that we kidnapped you we're going to release you you know this is so so and so it's my church as well it's the condition <laughs> you know the attraction of 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 crime got so very strong upon upon him that's why he do, you know does that at times it's peer pressure the people around basically fundamentally inside him he loves god but you see the people he has moved it all this while they invite him into the nonsense that they are doing and they are doing it together inside him intrinsically there's something thirsting after god but you see some other things that give him also a strong competition and that is why you cannot write anybody off that's why armed robbers hired killers have given their life to christ and today they are preaching the gospel that's why you must not have a heart to uh, make them fall and die but rather have a heart to get them born again because you just don't know some of them may be just like this criminal beside jesus who knew god who feared god who loved you said that's what you tell the other you don't even fear god no that was you fear god at least to a certain extent he knew jesus followed jesus on social media knew jesus had a had a uh, 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 a a kingdom was interested in the kingdom and yet he was a criminal it's as if you couldn't reconcile it to what it happens it really does happen you know and people deep inside them they, they are thirsting after god but this is all they know this is what they have lived by how am i okay what am i going to live upon why am i going to subsist if i don't continue in this crime yeah they had all those things and that's why you must be careful and be compassionate towards them and and bring them solutions and they will come to the lord jesus christ thank you very much for sharing time with us it's and i wish you a very very fine weekend as it comes along glory be to god